very good morning and welcome to Corriton on what has been probably the first non-wet day of uh, of the past goodness knows how many weeks. I I came out here at the uh, start of February to do some recceing and to um, try and record some stuff and ever since then it's just rained heavily. But there's a reason I'm here at this particular station. Today, as you can see, it is the end of a line and a 153 single car unit has just disappeared off towards Rada. But as you can see from this, with this bridge here, it looks very much as though the line kept going. And it's fair to say that yes, it did, or at least it tried to. I have wanted to film uh, a series about this particular railway for some time because it's fascinated me. About two years ago, I came out here and walk the track bed north of Corriton, which I will be doing again, um, because this was the Cardiff Railway Company. And it should have been an amazing success. They needed to build a line, which was nine, about nine and a half miles long from Cardiff up the valleys, connect up to the Taff Vale uh, with a specific purpose in mind. And it should have worked. But the fact is, it didn't. When you look at who was backing this line, there should have been no problem whatsoever. It was backed by the Buttes. The Buttes had built the East Butte and West Butte docks. They built Queen Alexander Dock and Roth Dock. They were shifting through their docks a significant tonnage of coal. And they had mines up in the valleys. They'd looked at what had happened with the Barry Railway Company, David Davis, who owned the Ocean Colliery, uh, a group of collieries, had built this, in conjunction with others, railway line and docks at Barry, and was shipping his coal down into his docks and not using the Taff Vale. And of course the Buttes were looking at it going, well, why can't we do the same? The problem is, they were late to the table and others had feasted. There was the Taff Vale Railway that had four lines up the valleys, the Alexander Newport Dock Railway had a line up there. The Barry Railway had lines up there. Rumney had lines up there. There were all sorts of companies shipping coal from the valleys down to the docks. And so the Cardiff Railway had to find another way of doing it. So the first thing they did was buy the Glamorganshire Canal. The plan was drain it and build a railway on the top of it. And then by buying the Aberdare Canal as well, they could also drain that and build branches. They put through um, a bill into Parliament uh, that had 21 different options for building railways up the valleys. And it passed in 1897. But the route they chose in the end wasn't the canal. The route they actually chose was completely different. They left the Rumney line on whom they had running powers at Heath Junction. They continued across the top of Cardiff up through Tonguinlice, uh, passing around Taft's Wells through Nangaro, up a boat, Rita Vellin, and then the idea is they joined the Taft Vale at Triforest. At least that was the plan. Being late to the party meant it wasn't cheap to build this line. They had to thread their way through the valley and avoid the lines that were already in situ. There were 27 overbridges, 15 underbridges and a tunnel 15 cuttings, multiple retaining walls, five occupation level crossings, and the Vardat they built alone, 512 feet, weighing 1,500 tonnes. Five of the bridges were over major roads, three over the canal, and three of these bridges as well as the Vardat had to be built on a skew. There was a tunnel at Tonguinlice, which was 180 yards long, and the story goes it was put there at the request of the Marcus of Butte, uh, because he had his holiday home, Castle Cock, on the side of the mountain, and there were vineyards, and he didn't want soot all over his grapes. How true that is, I really don't know. But it's fair to say it shows some of the challenges the company faced. But they didn't skimp. All of these bridges had dressed stone, and in some cases you would see CR insignias embedded to the, in the bridges. In some places, places that few people would actually see them. But there were problems, there was resistance. After all, the Taff Vale had recently been forced to connect the Barry lines to their, uh, to their lines. They didn't want another comp competitor taking traffic away from them. 
And so they objected and they came up with all sorts of objections. And when I get up that end of the line, which I will do in a future video, I'll go into details of what happened. But suffice to say, they bought a bit of land which came between the end of the Cardiff Railway and their lines and claimed, oh no, you can't possibly go over this land. The battle through arbitration, through parliament, through the courts lasted literally decades. There was a brief period of calm and the two, the two companies along with the Romney company decided they might do some sort of merger and so as a show of goodwill they connected the line up. Um, and one train, ceremonial train, actually passed over there at one point being driven by the Marquis of Butte himself. However, that period of calm ended and as I said, I'll tell you the full story another time. But suffice to say, having run that one train across that viaduct, no other train in service actually ever passed across there. They needed to generate some revenue. There was um, some businesses around Birch Grove that they linked up to, a quarry siding, a Portobello Quarry near Tapwell, and they also started running rail cars. And these rail cars uh, operated quite an intensive service, stopping at all the stations and halts along the line. In 1910, some hope of coal traffic appeared when uh, a new pit was opened at Nangaro and the connection and siding was put in there. But it wasn't until 1915 the first coal train started to run. And with only five, six hundred tonnes a week, it really wasn't that much. The First World War interrupted a lot of the debate, as I say. At, at the end of 1919, there was a lot of sort of management, unified management came together to try and work it all out. Uh, but in 1921, the Railways Act meant that the Cardiff Railway became part of GWR, as did the Taft Bell, as did the Barry, as did the Rumney, as did all of them. And it was up to the GWR to work out, should we put this connection in place or not? They decided no. The Taft Vale lines could ha handle the traffic perfectly okay. And on the 16th of September 1925, the lines above Rita Vellon, including the Vardak, were officially taken out of service. In 1931, a review of services resulted in all of the uh, stations north of Corriton being closed. A new one was opened in Birchgrove in uh, 1929, but apart from that, there was nothing, uh, no development at all. And in actual fact, the line north of Nankaro was taken out of service as well. The Vardat redevelopment in 1943 was basically taken down and 1,500 tonnes of steel donated to the war effort. But there was a twist. In 1946, the Coal Board uh, announced that they were going to build a coking plant at Nangaro. And in actual fact, the amount of coal traffic going up to Nangaro for coke and the coke coming out of Nangaro was going to significantly increase. Initially, construction trains were run up the line, um, but there was soon going to be a problem. These coal trains were going to get in the way of the passenger trains running up to Corriton. So they had to come up with a way of trying to, uh, trying to sort of fit them in. And what they did was really ironic, because they skewed the line at Taft's Well to join with the Taft Vale lines what was the original plan, admittedly in the other direction, but it just meant that everything between Taftwell and Corriton, including the tunnel at Tonguinlice, was taken out of use. The line was rapidly dug up, um, dumped into the canal, the canal covered over, and they built the A470 on the top of it. And there was genuinely very little left to see today. In 1986, both the pit and the coke works at Nantgaro closed, and the junction at Taft's Well was used for some, at one point for reversing trains coming up the city line. But that stopped when the line was lifted in 1996. So that's the line. It's still open as far as Corriton. Uh, they built a new station at Tea Glass in 1987, uh, but there is a little bit of a change happening along here. Because if you look at these, these are electrification masts. This line is gonna be part of the South Wales Metro and uh, we'll be uh, having class 756 Stadler First Flirt Trimo trains running up here. Over the next few videos, I'm going to be looking at what's left. In some cases, it's significant remains. In other cases, 
it's very little. But I'm going to try and tell the story of this fascinating line. My next video, I'm going to be wandering up there. Uh, this is the cutting north of Corriton Station to see what's left and then uh, beyond that to Tonguinlais. Along the way, well, the line's been bisected by the M4, but we can go around that and we can see what's there. And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy seeing the remains, the relics, and hearing the story of uh, this fascinating railway. So please like, subscribe, uh, hit that bell notification button, tell your friends, and uh, until next time.